Welcome back, War Room fans. Here we go. Next installment of War College. This uh, installment, we're going to talk about uh, the concept of unbalanced combat. So I'm sure a lot of you guys have been uh, on the Facebook page or reading the forums. And right now the hotness of conversation is like, What's the ideal stack against this stack to, to, to limit combat or limit damage you take? So guys are exploring this idea of uh, land combat. What's going to be the idea? Like, is this a really a good, com a good uh, combat based on the composition of the units? Okay. One of the things about War Room is we always have to remember, let's just pull off some Russians here. So basically how War Room works is we only have three types of units, okay? And I'm gonna put them in like a little triangle here, okay? So we have three types of units. And the reason why, okay, so the reason why I put the fighters up here is that land units basically can only fight land units. Naval units can basically only fight naval units. Yes, they do have inherent anti-air. But when we're, when we're moving these units around, you know, you're moving your naval to go attack the Navy, you're attacking with the land against their like land sacks, like the 61st hero. Air units though, can attack both aspects. They can come in and help out on both. This is, this is fundamental to the game that you, you kind of have to wrap your head around. That the real strength of air units when it comes to combat Specifically, we're going to talk about in this video is how to make land combat unbalanced. We're going to talk about this in the print. I got some principles of combat uh, coming up here, and we're going to talk about the, when it's air units against naval units. Navy is a little bit different because they have such a large inherent anti air. If you have like a really big stack of like six to eight surface units, not including subs you're gonna generate a lot of anti-air uh, with naval units. So we're gonna deal with that in a separate subject. This video is only gonna talk about unbalanced combat when it comes to the concept of air units coming in and helping land units. Now, this is really big and I'm gonna show you why. And guys who have been playing this thing since it first came out, since War Room first came out, they inherently know this. Deep down in their souls, they know exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna show it to you. So let's just take the opening. This is just the opening setup, Russian, German front. So I'm just gonna do, which whenever I play with, the new, with a bunch of new guys, especially at Board Game Geek, this always seems to be a very popular opening move and I'm sure your group is probably no different. And let's just say the Russian player goes, well, I think they're coming into Leningrad, but I'm not sure. But let's just say they, they retreated their air units out of here, okay? So basically they're defending Leningrad with these three units. The R2 guys, the R3 guys come in. Now, one thing you, you know, so the German player goes, well, I wanna take Leningrad. I have three stacks, I'm going in. Now, I want you to look at it from a different perspective. War Room is a game of attrition. You're going to lose, if you start getting into big battles, you're going to lose a lot more units than you'll ever be able to produce. So by turn four, you know, your loss rate is going to be higher than your production rate. So that's one of the reasons why guys are exploring these concepts of stack composition. What's the best combo to reduce casualties. So if the German player just goes, well, the heck with it, I'm just sending in all three of these stacks. Well, we now have a big massive land battle. Uh, in this very specific instance, uh, uh, Germany would actually have force advantage because we have tanks and they don't. But the Russians have a lot of infantry there and they're gonna be able to generate a lot of damage against us. And so what's going to happen in that combat is when I talked about uh, expectations of combats, that 
you know, the Germans aren't going to lose quite as many as the Russians, but basically you're just feeding your units into this meat grinder. Now notice, these are three of your Russian front stacks up here. Same thing with the Russians, okay? So maybe in the big picture, that's a good idea because you're just trying to attrition them down. Let's do it this way, though. Let's say that's my plan, and that's what the Russians did. One way you can do it is the traditional way, but here's the unbalanced combat example. 22nd comes in. That's the only unit you're sending in. Then I'm going to fly the 12th in. I'm going to fly the 11th in. I'm going to fly the 14th in. Okay. So in these three stacks, they're going to have, they're going to take eight anti-air. So with eight anti-air, realistically, you know, since we are bringing in a bomber, realistically, you have to assume you're going to lose one of those planes. If you get really unlucky, you might lose two. Combination of a bomber and a fighter. But let's just say for the for what the, the principle of this, let's just say nothing happens. So they shoot at you, they they get no damage. So right there in air power, that's a 10 stack, that's a 10 stack, 610, 6 or 6-4, six, 6-4, four, six, so that's 20. That's 26, 26 ground attacks going into Leningrad. So remember, we can only roll 30 in a turn, you know, in each combat. So if I'm generating 26 with just air power alone, there is no need to be sending all these guys in. Just send in one stack. Like the 22nd here with this armor unit, if their artillery goes all anti-air, there's a really good chance your armor unit's probably going to survive that combat, or maybe one of your artillery, depending on how the dice comes out. Because if they go all defensive, they've got 4, 7, 10, 11, 12. They have 13 on the ground. So there's a, there's a good chance that armor is going to survive, because remember, they don't get blacks and whites either. And you can put all your guys on defensive. So if they put them all at 26, 27, 28, 30, 32, 34, I mean, you're already way over 30. So even if you lose a plane, you're still going to generate 30 combat dice going in there. Okay? Now, another way of looking at it is, is well, if we're not going to play with batch cap limits... We're just going to play straight out of the box rules. Then on the opening turn, if that's how it shakes out, you just send in all the planes by themselves. You don't even attack Leningrad with land units on that opening turn. You just send in 26 on the ground into Leningrad. Now, they won't have force advantage, so they're not going to have blacks and whites, but they have four, six, they got nine... Uh, nine infantry so remember when we talked about expectations with 26 you realistically should hit three on your opening batch three on your second batch and probably two maybe three on your third batch so let's just say you went three three two that's eight hits so they're going to lose four infantry and they only have four uh four artillery so you should hit your expectation would then would be, I'm gonna roll at least two blues in my first batch, two blues in my second batch, and maybe two blues in my third. So if you do that, you're gonna blow up three artillery. So they're gonna lose basically this entire stack plus another artillery, and all they get to do is shoot eight at your planes. That's it. So, if you don't play with the batch cap rule, then ideally what you want to do is you always want to try to find their weak link and send an overwhelming air power into there to generate as many combat dice as you can. Because 
That way you can protect your land units. You could still move in here, okay? Because I, I do wanna take Leningrad eventually, you know, but at least I get it tied down so I get a foothold in there. Also, remember with batch cap, if you don't, if the batch cap optional rule, you're almost forced to send in at least a token force if you're gonna, if you're gonna attack primarily through air power. So that's how you get around the batch cap is it forces you to actually send in land power with your air power. If you don't play with that optional rule, then you can just send in the planes and it's what I call strafing. You just strafe them. You just keep blowing up his land units and there's absolutely nothing he can do against you. This is especially true in China. That's why it's so easy if Japan really focuses in on China because Japan has such a large amount of air units and Japan basically doesn't really need to risk its land units. It just sends in like two of these stacks. They just keep sending in two stacks of this, 20 combat dice into each territory and just keep blowing up land units, keep blowing up their infantry and there's absolutely nothing China can do to stop you. So that's, that's where I'm getting at guys with this unbalanced combat. You're always looking for opportunities to attack, but outguess them. So their air units, let's say, came back here into Moscow, and now you've created that unbalance here. Now, what's gonna happen is the next turn is the Russian player is gonna go, I'm not gonna let you do that again. And so you're gonna make him start moving these air units. So then when you rebase, you rebase into a central location, like let's say Ukraine, because most likely in the opening turn, you're gonna bring some guys up here to reinforce, okay? So they're gonna be protected, but now you now you can pick a different spot in there, and so Russia's always having to play this guessing game. Where are these air units going? And then if you guess right, you go, well, this time I'm gonna do it, you know, the second turn, I'm going into the Caucasus. So you bring all three of these air units and you just repeat the attack, but you do it down here in the Caucasus, okay? And then even in this example, you could even move in, let's say the 33rd, because once again, the Germans have a tank. And so even if the 21st is down in here, you know, it doesn't, it's an even battle, meaning no force advantage. But once again, it's hard to kill those tanks because the Russians aren't going to be able to generate a lot of stuff unless they go to offensive. But if they go offensive, then that risks their infantry to these aircraft strafe attacks. And you'll just mow through these guys. Because remember when we said up here, if you just come in with air power alone, you get 26 and you realistically should get eight hits. Well, they've got four, they got seven, so you would kill all their infantry if they went offensive. So a smart Russian player would look at it and go, well, I'm kind of hosed, so I'll just take my three anti-air, put everybody in defensive, and hopefully kill the 33rd. And hopefully I don't take too many casualties here from all these stupid air units coming in and unbalancing the combat. So you can see what a difference it makes if you're just coming in with land units. Land units against land units, and that's when we get into this whole, uh, well, let's compare the stacks. What should I be doing? Should I be going offensive, defensive? Well, if you have all these guys coming in, preying on units, stacks that can only generate like one, two, maybe three anti-air, you're just gonna start grinding infantry in, in artillery. You're just gonna start blowing up all his land units and there's nothing, there's absolutely nothing he can do to stop you. If Germany gets in this situation and they're always guessing right on where you're sending in your planes, going against his stacks, and he's always guessing wrong on his planes, the Germans would just eat these little stacks of four or five units backed up by 26 in the, you know, coming in on the ground from air units is just going to chew the living crap out of these Russians. And there's nothing they can do about it. 
I don't have it set up, but the same principle happens in, starting in around turn four. Out here in Great Britain, if Germany doesn't do anything to try to take out some of this air force, the allies are gonna have, between the United States and Great Britain, the US is gonna have like an eight stack of fighters and like a four stack of bombers. Well, three American bombers and one from Great Britain. So they're gonna have like over 12 fighters up here. And then they're just gonna start doing the same thing to you in France. Well, I got nothing better to do today. Well, how rude, I got interrupted, but we're back. So what I was saying is that, you know, if you're not playing with the batch cap rules, you're just playing straight out of the box. And around turn four, the allies are just gonna start sending in guys here, just strafing your ground units and just killing them. And they're gonna kill a lot more ground units than you kill in these guys. If you put in too much anti-air in here, well then you'll obviously stop them from doing it and then they'll just pick on someone else. Or they'll go here and then invade with a small land stack and then send in their overwhelming uh, air power to unbalance it where they're gonna, they generate so much ground combat factors off the air power that they don't need to be risking sending in like, well, I'm sending in the horde. I'm sending in two eight stacks of ground in there. Just wait a turn. Just send in a small stack of four guys, five guys, three, it's up to you. You know, you might lose them all. They might get sacrificed, but you'll generate your 30 combat dice and override the batch cap limitation. Now, it sounds like it's a workaround on the batch cap, but especially over here, it makes it so that the Western allies have to actually invade you to do that tactic on you. Because remember with the batch cap rules, guys, if they have three color types, even if they send in 30 in the air, they only get to roll 10 dice. So you don't wanna risk a lot of air power if you're only gonna be able to generate 10 dice. It really stops that tactic of unbalancing the combat against the land by using your air units. So the big principle of unbalanced combat in War Room is, is you're always looking especially when you're on the attack. You can do this on the defense too, but primarily when you're looking to attack someone, you wanna find where they're weak in terms of anti-air, either through having actual air units there or just a, a lack of you know, artillery and uh, armor to generate their anti-air. So that's the big thing about unbalanced combat in War Room. When you start you know, you start playing the game and then you start realizing the, this principle is gonna start coming up and you can really leverage it. I'm not saying let's not have discussions about, you know, stack composition, what's the ideal way to do it to lose the, the least amount of units. But that really doesn't matter if they're showing up every time with 20 plus error going to the ground un unimpeded, basically. And you don't even need to have, you can just have an armor, artillery, and one infantry just going in every time with your air units. Yes, you're gonna, you're gonna slowly attrition away, you know, three units, but if you lose three ground units and they're losing seven each turn, well, after three turns, they've lost 21 units and you've lost nine. You know, that's a big deal in this game. Plus it keeps the momentum going with your ground units on the, so on the offensive. There obviously there is a certain point where this principle of, well, I'm always looking for unbalanced combats. There is a certain point where sometimes you can't, you can't do it because of just how the board's laid out, the situation going on, uh, your opponent, let's say guessed right, and now all of a sudden they have a bunch of air units down here too. Well, then that goes into principles of air combat. So like the first principle of air combat is if let's just say in this discussion, this is how the air battle was, but Russia guessed right and they came down here into the caucus. So now the Russian air force is here too, okay? The first principle of air combat is 
you always try to shoot down as many planes as you can. To heck with the land units. If they get shredded, they get shredded. All those air units go at their air units. Air units are designed to kill air units. The faster you can kill off their air force, the faster you can get back to killing them with this unbalanced combat. But if they show up and they guess right and the entire Russian Air Force shows up here, well, then your entire Air Force, you put them all on anti-air. All your planes, all your fighters engage these guys. Don't send them in the ground because, remember, if you send them all to the ground, they can't attack the air units. So you, not only did you not shoot down any of their planes, they're going to shred the, you know, they're just going to shred your Air Force. So... Remember, guys, the first principle, and when we go into the principles of uh, the aspects of the game, land, air, and sea, the first principle of air, of air units is whenever you can attack their air units with your air units, you do it. You always try to get rid of their air force. The minute you get rid of someone's air force and they no longer can defend themselves with airplanes, the faster you can start killing off all these ground units, doing strat bombing, killing production, and there's absolutely nothing they can do. They're completely defenseless against you if you have enough air units. And enough air units could be a simple stack of like four, five. I mean, you can still, even with just a simple stack of one bomber and four fighters, I mean, that's you're generating 16 ground attacks. So you don't have to have a huge air force to take advantage of, let's say, if the Russians completely lose their air force and Germany has just, you know, one of these bomber stacks with two extra fighters. That's the entire German Air Force, we'll say. That's still a very formidable, uh, you know, stack of planes there that can generate a lot of ground damage. So there you go, guys. So that's the, the, the big thing about War Room is you always wanna look for unbalanced combats. Leverage the air units in conjunction with small stacks of land units and you will dramatically increase your attrition rate against your enemy. You're not losing as many units and they're losing, I mean, you're, you're losing very few land units and they're losing a lot of land units compared to you. Now, when do you kind of pull back on this plan when it comes to, well, if they have 12 anti-air, maybe you get a little hesitant about just bonsai charging planes in because you just don't want to be sending planes in and getting them killed. So, but that's, that's up to you. You know, at what point is it that, okay, they have enough anti-air that I'm going to call off this little strategy or move to greener pastures somewhere else and stop trying to do unbalanced combats where I overwhelm them with air units with small stacks of land units. Okay. So that's the principle of unbalanced combat, guys. I hope you understand that. And for the new guys out there, that's why I always play with the batch cap limit rule now. It stops you from just sending in air units against ground units. And in essence, the ground units are treated as land units. So they get just, they generate just as much land attack as these guys do. It, it limits how much damage these planes can do coming in by themselves against ground troops. It balances out the game big time. So I highly recommend every group should use batch cap limits. Okay guys, I'll come back with another video on i think the next one is we'll do land combat principles what are like the three four number one things that you should always keep in mind principles of land units how, how to move them how to engage them in combat and tactics we can use talk to you later bye welcome back war room fans all right here we go let's keep our uh, series of videos our war college strategy and tactics videos going along going along here uh I've noticed there's been a couple comments on some of my videos about a lot of the new guys seem to be confused about uh, the, the batch cap limitation rules. Uh, it, they don't really understand why it's why it's in the game. Uh, it just se it just seems weird to them, and I think it's just because they haven't played enough games and, and they don't completely have their head grasped or uh, wrapped around uh, combat. 